the bamboo cutter's tail. Long, long ago, deep in a bamboo forest, there lived an old man and his wife. Though the forest was a lovely place, life was rather dreary and lonely for the old couple, for they were very poor and had no children of their own to love and care for. The old man spent his days outdoors, cutting bamboo. He used the bamboo to make baskets, tableware, hat, and other goods which he sold to people in town. We no longer know what the old man's real name was, but in those days everyone simply called him the bamboo cutter. And this is a story of a wondrous thing that happened to him and his wife. One day, the old man was walking through a dark thicket looking for good straight bamboo to cut, when he noticed a golden halo of light shining in the darkness. It seemed to come from a single slender bamboo plant. The old man was astonished. In all his years of cutting bamboo, he had never run across anything like this and he decided to cut open the plant to see what made it shine so. He took out his axe and felled the bamboo with one stroke, and you will never believe what he found. Inside the hollow stem was a tiny baby girl. She was only about three inches high, and she was the cutest thing the old man had ever seen. He lifted the wee girl gently in the palm of his hand and carried her back to this house. The moment he got home, he called to his wife. Look what God has sent us, he said. Our very own daughter. Goodness, gasped the old woman. Isn't she beautiful? The old man explained the miraculous way in which he found the girl, and he and his wife decided upon name for her. Kagahime. And that wasn't the end of the miracles. Almost every day from then on, the old man would come across bamboo plants that glowed with the same golden light. But when he cut these, there were never any little girls inside. Instead, there were piles of gold coins. Before long, the old couple were very, very wealthy indeed. And that, of course, allowed them to raise Kagahime in a manner befitting a true princess. Kaguya-hime grew astonishingly fast, sometimes as much as an inch in a single day, and each day she seemed more radiant and full of life. The old man would watch her racing along with a pine wheel in her hand or chasing dragonflies from flower to flower, and his heart would fill with joy. There's nothing I wouldn't do for that little girl, he often thought. Of course, she wasn't a little girl for very long. In just three months, Kagehime had become a mature young maiden, so beautiful that one wondered if she could possibly be of this world. Her extraordinary beauty made any man who happened to look upon her fall hopelessly in love. Word of the bamboo cutter's lovely daughter spread quickly throughout the land, and rich Young noblemen were soon beating a path to her door to ask for her hand in marriage. But Kagahime refused to see them. I shall never marry, she told the old man and his wife. I will never willingly leave your side. The old man was secretly gladdened by her words, for he loved Kagahime as much as any father has ever loved his child, and dreaded the thought of losing her. But five of the suitors, five young men of great wealth and standing, were especially persistent. They camped outside the door, day and night, pleading for a chance to see Kagehime. The old man was at a loss as to how to discourage these earnest young noblemen, and as time went by, he began to feel sorry for them. At last, he decided to have his daughter choose one as her husband. He said to Kagehime, You shall marry the one who brings you these things. The first is to bring you a golden bow laden with fruit of living amber. The second is to bring in an animal skin with fur of purest gold. 
each of the old man demands was more impossible than the last. A fan that shines like the rising sun, a necklace made of dragon's eyes, paper that lights up the darkness. The old man carried this message to the suitors and the five young men set off immediately, each bowing to return with the gift Kaguyahime had requested. Easier said than done, thought the old man. He was sure they had soon abandoned all hope of marrying her. Imagine his surprise when months later, all five returned with the fabulous treasures demanded of them. The amber fruit, the golden fur, the shining fan, the dragon's eyes necklace, the luminous paper, each was a marvel to behold. But when the gifts were brought before Kagahime, she pronounced them all worthless. And indeed, her own natural beauty so outshone the glittering baubles that the suitors were forced to admit that they were fakes. The young men left the house dejected and heartbroken, never to see their beloved princess again. The old man was relieved that the matter was finally settled and that his beautiful daughter would not have to marry and move away. But his happiness was to be short-lived. In the eighth month of that year, a change began to come over Kagahime. Night after night, she had to sit and gaze at the moon, waxing ever fuller in the sky. And even as the moon grew brighter, the look in Kagahime's eyes grew more wistful and melancholy. Seeing this, the old man and woman began to worry. Kagahime, Kagahime, what is it that makes you so sad? They asked. Kagehime burst into tears and laid her head on the old woman's lap. Oh, I wish I could stay with you forever, she sobbed. But soon I must return. Return? said the old man. Re return where? To the city of the moon, where I was born. The city of the moon? Yes, now that I'm grown, they will be coming for me. What? Who? When? The moon people, on the fifteenth night of this month, when the moon is full. But that's tomorrow. I won't hear of it, cried the old man. You're our daughter, and no one's going to take you from us. He and his wife wrapped their arms around the maiden, and all three of them wept. We will never let you go, Kagehime, the old man sobbed. Never. The next day, the old man hired a thousand strong samurai to keep the moon people away. Standing shoulder to shoulder, the warriors encircled the house and even formed a column on the roof. When the moon began to rise over the mountains that evening, they lifted their bows and pointed their arrows at the sky. The old man and woman, meanwhile, sat with Kagehime in the innermost room of the house. Once the large round moon had risen fully, it cast a bright halo of light upon the stolid samurai who now began to let fly their arrows. But the arrows vanished in mid-air, and the moonbeams pierced the warrior's armor, paralyzing them where they stood. Then, from out of that unearthly light, two moon maidens appear with a winged horse and chariot, descending toward the house. At the same time, the door to the inner room slid open by itself, and Kagehime rose and walked outside as if drawn by some invisible force. The old man and woman realized now there was nothing they could do to keep her from leaving. Kagehime! They cried, running outside behind her. If you must go, take us with you. I wish I could. You have no idea how much I'll miss you. Please take this as a token of my gratitude for the love you've shown me. So saying, Kagehime dropped a pouch on the ground. The medicine inside, she said, will keep you from ever growing older. May you always be healthy and happy. Goodbye. Kagehime stepped into the river chariot and the winged horse shook its mane and leaped into the sky. With tears 
streaming down their faces, the old bamboo cutter and his wife watch the horse, the chariot, and heavenly maidens disappear in the light of the moon. Later that night, the old couple stood beside a small fire they had built outside. The old man was holding the magic pouch that Kaguya-hime had left behind. So, with this medicine, we can live forever, he sighed, looking up at the bright full moon. But, without you, Kaguya-hime, how could we ever be happy again? And what good is life without happiness? And with these words, he tossed the pouch into the fire. The end.